Oh, I'm so excited to show you guys this video. It is definitely one of my most requested videos here on my channel, so I'm definitely excited to bring you guys this little episode in bookish things. You know what I mean? Bookish things. Hello, book reading friends. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Melanie, and today I am here to show you every single book I own, also known as my bookshelf tour. Now, I do believe I have close to 200 books, so today I'm going to be showing you every single one of those books, not giving you a long synopsis for each of them because that would take ages, but I'm definitely going to be pulling out every single book, showing you the cover, reading the title and the author, and if I have a specially fond memory of a book, then I will tell you said memory, or I will tell you a little bit of what the book is about if it is is indeed a favorite. As you guys know, these shelves are mostly ordered by height and coincidentally, a lot of different genres have around the same height in books. So that is how I organize my bookshelves. Again, there's a million different ways that people organize them bookshelves. I know some people do it by color, other people do it by height, other people do it by author, other people just do it alphabetically. So there's a ton of different ways that people organize their bookshelves. This is just my preferred version because I do think that aesthetically, at least to me when I look at it, this is the one that looked the best. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed enjoy my shelves I guess I don't even know what to say in regards to like oh my god I hope you enjoyed this video like I hope you enjoy the way that I show you the books I don't really know what to say beyond that I will say though the only shelf that you won't be seeing in depth is my bottom shelf and that is because that is my to be hauled to be shown pile those are all books that I have gotten here recently that I have either bought myself or sent to me by a publisher or that you guys have kindly sent to me so those books I am saving of course for a book haul and I don't want to spoil the books in there so they they are turned the other way around so you won't really be able to see what they are and they are not a part of the general bookshelf tour just because they are not integrated fully on my shelves because I need to find a space for them once I do haul them. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to do so down below for more bookish content. I am constantly uploading videos that I am sure you do not want to miss. I am also live streaming throughout the week doing my weekly reading sprint and you can also follow me on all of my social medias which are always linked down below. I have an Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads and an Amazon wish list. You you guys know the drill all of those links you will be able to find down below and yeah without a further ado let's get right into the video all right, so these are my shelves. Some of you are very, very familiarized with my shelves. I have shown them in a lot of different videos. You've seen them in reading vlogs. I did make a video building the bookshelves and reorganizing them when I first got the shelves. This bookshelf did go through a little bit of a reorganization process after my Christmas book haul, just because I did get a lot of books around that time. So I definitely had to make some rearrangements, but I love the way that it's looking right now. I have no doubt within the next month, month and a half, I will have to reorganize everything again. So this is definitely something that will continuously be reorganized just because I am constantly getting books. It is a part of being a booktuber and a reviewer. You will also be able to peep that I own a lot of series, but a lot of series are not complete on my shelves, either because I started them as ebooks, carried them out as physical or vice versa. So there are still a lot of series that are incomplete that I have yet to buy the book for. I do know there is one particular shelf that I won't be showing in depth and like pulling the books out, which is my very top shelf because I have no doubt I'm going to have to climb my tripod somewhere in order for it to reach the top shelf. So if I pull every book out, that's going to be disastrous. But otherwise, you will be seeing every book on my bookshelf. All right, friends. So I'll start by giving you a little bit of an overview of my shelves. As you can see, most of it is ordered by height. This is not really by genre or by author. I tried to do it by height mostly because aesthetically is what pleased me the most. I felt like it looked the prettiest to me. And coincidentally, most genres do have around the same height when they do hardcore covers or paperbacks but overall it stays pretty consistent with height which I am very very pleased with and I'll just go in later and show you guys more specifically how everything looks and for the bottom two shelves that you see right there the books are turned because I haven't hauled them I haven't showed them on my channel these are mostly books that I have recently bought or books that I was gifted quite recently so you haven't seen them on my channel quite yet so I just have them turned because again they are not a part of like the overview of my shelves because they still don't quite have a place until I haul them, if you get what I mean. So again, this is just a nice little overview of how everything looks, and then I'll just go in per shelf and show you everything. So let's get right on close to that 
first very top shelf. Okay, so this is the first shelf I'm gonna be showing you guys. This is pretty much a miscellaneous shelf. These are for the most part taller paperbacks that I didn't really know where to put on my bookshelves because they didn't fit anywhere else with other sizes of books that I have. And then I have regular sized hardcovers that fell short from my main regular hardcover shelf. So they needed to be put somewhere and they ended up here with the taller paperbacks. Definitely not my favorite shelf, very random, does not have any particular order to it. And these are for the most part unread. I do have my Ark of Addy, which is my only copy of Addy LaRue right there. I've got The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer, which I never actually read, but the concept sounds quite interesting. We've got An Ember in the Ashes, which I do plan to read this month. Stalking Jack the Ripper, which is a historical fiction. The Brass Queen, another arc. And you will notice that my arcs are mixed up with my regular copies just because I don't own enough arcs to make an entire shelf out of them. Then The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winters, which I mean, definitely want to read. I know it's a lot of people's favorites. We've got the first two books in the Dave Abat trilogy consisting of City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper. We've got my beautiful, stunning copy of Cemetery Boys, which is the Barnes & Noble's exclusive. And I am so incredibly sad that I don't have anywhere else to display this because on my videos, you definitely cannot see it. And then we've got a mix of very old books, very old YA books that I bought back when I was a teenager. And that is Panic by Lauren Oliver, Uninvited by Sophie Jordan, Teardrop by Lauren Kate, Girl in Line by Zoe Sugg, which I never read. Then we've got The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, Turtles All the Way Down by John Green, and then we have got The Miracles of the Namiya General Store by Keigo Higashino. And my other top shelf is basically stationary stuff. I do have that one classic manga collection that my brother bought. I just haven't given it to him. Right next to it, I do have my bullet journal. And then I just have a little container that was from a Pixie PR package where I have all of my pencils, pens, markers for my bujo. And right next to that, I just have washi tapes, all of my tabs for my annotation, post-its, both the taller ones and the smaller ones. All right, next up is a shelf that is comfortable for the camera. So I will be pulling out the books just so that you can see the stunning covers. And I will be talking a little bit about some of these that I have read and enjoyed, but this is mostly my taller hardcover shelf. For the first four books in this shelf, we first have These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. As you know, this was my top favorite book of 2020. I definitely did not expect it to be my top favorite of 2020. There's a lot of political intrigue in here there is enemies to lovers to enemies to lovers romance. It's just super messy. It is set in 1920 Shanghai and it is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. As you can see, it is obviously loved and annotated. Then we've got Lovisona by Romina Garber, a book that I really want to read this year. I actually have quite a fun reading vlog planned that will feature this book. Then we've got Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, a book that I have been putting off for months now ever since I got it. This is my current read actually as I am filming this. This, and I do not know why I've been putting this off for such a long time. It is dark academia. It is very dark and twisty about a girl who can see ghosts. And it is about the secret societies in Yale. So definitely super intriguing read that has a lot of social commentary. And then we've got To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. If I had to give like a keyword for this book, it would probably be First Contact with Aliens. And I have not read this book yet, but I am planning to very, very soon. A lot of people have recommended this to me. We've got Got Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. And we've got Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. And then we've got the infamous Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, which I have yet to read. We've got more book of the month picks. And the first one is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. As you know, this book is kind of conflicting for me because I would recommend this book left and right. It is very polarizing. And everyone's opinion on this book is different. So I definitely recommend it regardless of the fact that I gave it three stars. Character are very complex and I definitely had a fun time reading this one. It reads pretty easily. The writing and the atmosphere for this one is definitely incredible, so highly recommend. And we've got Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, which I actually read this month. And this book had me all kinds of freaked out as I was reading it. It is very paranormal, psychological, twisty, thrillery. It is all of the above. I definitely recommend this Riley Sager, the only one that I have read. Then we've got another thriller. And as you can see, I enjoy my thrillers with 
book of the month. This is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. And then we've got Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. This is the prequel to Practical Magic, which I know a lot of people have enjoyed. We've got Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, which I know a lot of people loved last year after getting it from book of the month. We've got Head Over Heels by Hannah Orenstein. And it centers a lot around gymnastics and all of the claims that came after all of the sexual assaults from the American Gymnastics Olympic team. It was a very engaging read. It is obviously contemporary. We do follow fictional characters and the author herself was a gymnast. So it was really interesting to see the take from a gymnast's perspective. We've got Samantha Shannon's The Bone Season, which everyone adores. And then we've got A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. Next up, we have The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. This is Arthurian mythology, but in this one, we follow Guinevere's perspective instead of Arthur's perspective, which is quite interesting. We have Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, a book that I definitely enjoyed last year. It was very atmospheric with food descriptions. It was in Sicily, Italy, and we have witches and demon princes. And then we've got the first two books in the Poppy War series. And again, you'll notice that a lot of my series are incomplete physically. And these are other books that I just read and adored. As you can see, they are tabbed and annotated. Both of them are. And I do have a reading vlog up for the entirety of the series because I actually got to read an arc of the third book. So I'll definitely be linking that down below for you guys. And then the last book on this shelf is actually Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard, a book that is a bookshelf veteran for me. I have owned this book probably for seven years now. Same shelf, but on the other side, I have my Cassandra Clear shelf. Again, just my standard Shadowhunter shelf. I first read these books, I believe it was eight years ago, and I have just fallen in love with the story since. I do hope to one day have my collection complete. As you can see, my collection goes all the way up to Lady Midnight. I don't own anything further than that, except Chain of Gold, of course. So we obviously start with the Infernal Devices, starting with Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess. And then right after that, I do have the Shadowhunters Codex, which is a part of the story, and they later made an actual book out of it. And this particular book I actually quite love because it has annotations from Clary and Simon, and it's quite funny. So let me just show you guys real quick. First off, the book without the dust jacket looks looks like this. It's like a watercolor effect with blue and then it has the mortal cup on the cover and then it has gorgeous end pages where it features the characters obviously from the mortal instruments. So at the back we have the characters from the infernal devices. Some of them are annotated by Clary. So the book is quite fun to read. It has like little annotations right here. I remember reading this way back when and I used to love this book so much. I literally felt like I was a shadow hunter reading this. We have got Chain of Gold which is the first installment in the Last Hours trilogy, also by Cassandra Clare, obviously. We've got City of Bones, which is the first book in the Mortal Instruments, City of Ashes, and then City of Glass. And obviously, as you can see, my copy of City of Bones is actually the movie tie-in edition. And this copy of Chain of Gold is actually the collector's first edition. So you will see it has illustrations of the characters and it's just everything that I needed, but I didn't know it. And for the final four books in this shelf, we have obviously City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and then we have got City of Heavenly Fire, which is definitely one of my favorite finales ever. As you can see, I also turned my dust jacket upside down because I realized that there was some illustrations under the dust jacket, so I definitely had to turn this so that you could appreciate these incredible, incredible characters. And then we have got Lady Midnight, which is the first installment in the Dark Artifices. I do not own any of the other ones physically. And and then for decor in the corner, I just have this golden dog that my brother and I got last year, I believe. This actually used to live at my bedside table, but when I got myself some bookshelves, I definitely knew it had to go in there on display. Next up, I have my Sarah J Maas shelf, and this is definitely, if not one of my favorite shelves, then definitely my favorite shelf. As you guys know, I absolutely adore Sarah J Maas. I love her stories, her writing style. I just love everything about the way that she built her world and her character. Characters, definitely stories that have stayed with me ever since I have read them. So first off, I have the collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is actually a gorgeous edition. As you can see, once you put it out of its actual sleeve, you get this little sleeve right here that says A Court of Thorns and Roses in foil. And when you turn it at the back, it just has a little rose there at the back. And then the actual hardcover has the little forest with the wolf that is at the beginning of the book. And then if we turn it around, we have have Feyre with her little bow and if you've read the book 
and you know how significant this particular scene is because it is essentially the inciting incident. It is what triggers off the entirety of the story. Onto the actual series, we have the new editions of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So we've got A Court of Thorns and Roses, Court of Mist and Fury, Court of Wings and Ruin, and then A Court of Frost and Starlight. And just look at the tabs in Aquatar. I don't think I have ever seen anything more satisfying in my life. Then of course, the one copy that I have on display on this shelf is Miss Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood by Miss Mass. I cannot wait for the second installment in the Crescent City series. It is her first adult fantasy novel and another book that was highly tabbed and annotated. I have a reading blog up for this too. It is spoiler free, so I'll make sure to leave that link down below in case you want to check all of my thoughts out. And then we of course have the Throne of Glass series, which definitely destroyed me when I read it. I did not expect to love this as much as I did Aquatar. So we have Catwoman Soul Stealer by Sarah J Maas. This has nothing to do with Throne of Glass, Aquatar, or Crescent City. This is just some collab that she did with DC for the DC Icon series, which other authors also contributed to. And then for Throne of Glass, we have the first four books, starting with Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows. And then we've got the last three books in the Throne of Glass series, which are definitely some of my favorite books of all time. I cannot get over Miss Empire of Storms. I constantly want to punch this book in the face because the ending of this book was not fair. I think this was definitely the first Throne of Glass book that I annotated this much. Everything else was kind of annotated. And then Mr. Tower of Dawn came into play and it did not disappoint one bit. Definitely one of my favorite books that I read last year. Miss Kingdom of Ash, which I read and finished in January. Definitely one of the best finales that I have read as well. Definitely has a special place in my heart. And this is mostly same size hardcovers. As you can see, there is a variety of genres here. We do have some dystopian. We've got some fantasy. We have got some thrillers. We have got just a little bit of everything in here, but I definitely wanted to have a shelf for my shorter hardcovers, if you would call them that. I love the way that I I got to organize this almost like in a rainbow. For the first few books in here, I have The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Then we have got Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. However, this is not the actual way that it looks. I lost the dust jacket a long time ago. This is definitely one of the older books on my bookshelf, but this one in particular, I just don't know where the dust jacket went. But this book is illustrated. Let me see if I can find a little illustration full page for you. And it's just kind of like gothic illustrations. I love this edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I got this, I believe I must have been like nine or 10 at the time when I got this. And I remember being super scared of the illustrations on this one. And I think that's why I took the dust jacket off because it was kind of freaking me out. Then we have got Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. And then we have got The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed. Then we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahira Mafi. Definitely one of my favorite books that I read last year as well. This, I believe, was Tahira Mafi's first contemporary novel, and I think she did a fantastic job at highlighting the events for the Muslim community after 9-11. Definitely cried in this book. Then we have got American Royals by Catherine McGee, and last but not least, my second copy and the standard copy of Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I definitely recommend that book for people who are just now getting into fantasy. Very easy to read. It is very atmospheric. The magic system is very easy to follow. There is virtually no world building because it is set in our contemporary world. So definitely one that I would recommend all the time. Then we've got The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. Definitely my favorite out of the Truly Devious trilogy. Then we have got The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. It has Deckled Edges, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and the very much famous Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson, which I will be reading this week and I will be cracking the case. You already know it. I'm gonna be playing Detective Mel Reads in that one and I am very, very excited. Now we've got Allegiant by Veronica Roth. Definitely my least favorite book out of the Divergent trilogy with The Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is the only Acevedo that I have yet to read. There is also Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. And then we have got Tiffany D. Jackson's Grown. We've got Never Look Back by Lilian Rivera. This is an Orpheus and Eurydice retelling, but it is retold from a Latin X character's perspective. A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. Then we have got The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, the third installment in the Truly Devious series. As you can tell by my 
shelf. I don't own the first Ruli Devious book, so again, another one that I need to get for the collection to be complete. And then we have got Wilder Girls by Rory Power. And then for the last three books, we have got Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy, or A Divergent Collection by Veronica Roth, which I never actually read, but I do own it. And then A Deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova. Next up, we have a very, very random shelf. This has absolutely no order to it, except the fact that they all mostly match in height. Beside that, there is nothing in the shelf that makes sense. So I'm gonna start pulling the books out, but just know that there's a mix of dystopian, graphic novels, manga, <laughs> sci-fi, kind of like thrillery books, fantasy, paranormal romance. There is just a lot going on in the shelf, so it's all over the place for me. So starting right towards the left, we have got Bloom, which is a graphic novel, and this is by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganusho. Then we have got Legendborn by Tracy Dion, and this is the UK edition. It is obviously a paperback as opposed to the standard hardcover for the US. Priory of the Orange Tree, also by Samantha Shannon. This is a chunker, and I have yet to read it, but I have heard incredible things about this one. And then we have got the first two books in the Shatter Me series, Shatter Me and Unravel Me. I definitely want to reread this year and hopefully maybe finish out the rest of the series. I used to love the series growing up. I loved just the romance and the world building. It is kind of dystopian with fantastical elements because the characters do have powers. The third book in the Shatter Me series is Ignite Me, also by Tahira Mafi. Then we have got When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. I think the thrillery aspect of this book was not as scary to me. However, the themes alone were absolutely fantastic. The way that they were executed were out of this world. Definitely gave me Get Out vibes this one. I have got a random copy of Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins, the third book in the Hunger Games series in paperback. And then I have got 20th Century Boys. This is volume one by Naoki Urasawa. This is not mine. This is actually my brother's, but it sits here on my shelves. And then I have got the first book in the Illuminae Files. Illuminae by J. Chris off and Amy Kaufman. Next up, I have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I only have the first one and I did get this back in the day when I was very, very young. I was probably 13 or 14, but I got this because Jesse from Jesse the Reader, he actually adores Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. So I definitely had to get this one and I actually never read it because back in the day, again, I was a was, I still kind of am, I'm not gonna lie, but the illustrations on this one definitely kind of creeped me out a little bit. Bit. I know there are some illustrations with like kids like this that I was definitely not vibing with. They are very creepy to me still. Then I have got Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, a book that either people love or hate or love to hate and hate to love, but I definitely do want to read this one because I love lyrical writing. Then we have got the first two books in the Vampire Academy series, Vampire Academy and the movie tie-in edition, and then Frostbite, both by Richelle Mead. Med? Mead. I still don't know. And then we have got Wonder Woman War Bringer by Lee Bardugo, again, part of the DC Icon series. Then we have got Shadow and Bone, also by Lee Bardugo. And if you have been subscribed to my channel for a while, then you know exactly how I feel about this book. Then we got Six of Crows, also by Lee Bardugo, the Twilight graphic novel in Spanish. So we have Crepúsculo, la novela gráfica by Stephanie Meyer. Twilight, the first book, and I own the white edition of these books. And then to finish off this shelf, we've got New Moon, Eclipse, The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner, and then we've got Breaking Dawn all by Stephanie Meyer, all from the series Twilight. Again, we've got the same shelf on the other side, and this is mostly kind of dystopian from this end, and then we have got same size paperbacks and then a few graphic novels, but again, a shelf that has no order to it for the most part. First off, we've got the Scythe Trilogy by Neil Schusterman, and actually, I've only read the first book. As you can see, it is heavily annotated. I absolutely adored this one, one of my favorite books that I read last year. One of my favorite books of all time now. I just, this solidified my love for dystopian. It did everything right. However, I have yet to read the rest of the series just because I am incredibly afraid of it not living up to the expectation. As you can see, my three copies are different editions. This one is like glossy and like shiny, as you can tell. Then my copy of Thunderhead is completely matte. And then the toll is just a standard hardcover. So none of them match. Next, we have what would be considered almost most like a dystopian classic in regards to YA, The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. But we have The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay, as you can see, all in hardcover. My favorite from what I remember was definitely Catching Fire. This was such a solid 
book and I love the adaptation for it as well. Maybe a series that I would be done for rereading in 2021. Next up we have Crave by Tracy Wolf, which is a paranormal romance and this is kind of ironic in a way that I liked this book so much to annotate it when I did not enjoy the second installment so I'm kind of glad that this is the only one on my shelves. And then we have got the Villains Duology or what is now to be a series by V.E. Schwab which is Vicious and Vengeful. I have yet to read Vengeful but I loved Vicious. It gave me the biggest Marvel superheroes, heroes the TV show vibes. Then we've got The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss, State City by Fonda Lee, and then we've got an oldie but a goodie, a book two staple. We've got The Unbecoming of Meridire by Michelle Hodkin. We've got two series here, one that I have never read but I was gifted, and then the other one, I believe I read the first book but never the second one. So the first one is the Fifth Wave series by Rick Yancey. We've got the Fifth Wave being the first book in the movie tie-in edition, so you know around the time where I got this book. The second one being The Infinite Sea, which I got and I don't have any memories of reading this. And then I've got the If I Stay duology by Gail Foreman. Then we have The Young Elites by Mary Lou. I never actually read the Legend trilogy, but I did get The Young Elites and I started reading this because it was from a villain's perspective and that to me called my attention a lot more than Legend did. However, I never finished the book and I don't think I even got that far in. Got Layla by Colleen Hoover. We all know how I feel about this one if you've been here for a while. And then I have got The Lux Diaries by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the special collector's edition, which is essentially a bind up of the first two books. So in here we have got Obsidian and Onyx. Also by JLA, we have got From Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I do have a reading vlog up spoiler free for the both of these books. So I'll leave that linked down below as well. And I love these books so much. It is fantasy romance, but I just fell in love with the characters, with the steam, with the world building. Everything was just fantastic with these novels. And then last on the shelf, I've got a few graphic novels. These are the only graphic novels that I own and I definitely want to expand my collection. So we have got Fens Volume 1. This is by C.S. Packet, Joanna the Mad, and Joanna La Fuente. And then we have got the first three volumes in Saga by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. This one is volume three. We also got volume two, which I love the cover for. And last but not least, we have got volume one. Another shelf that I really love is this one. This is in its majority contemporaries and romances all in paperback, though I do have a few sci-fi fantasy books in here that because they were around the same height, I just fit them in here because they didn't really have a place on any of the top shelves so just let them here and I quite love the way that this looks. I did manage to again do a little rainbow. We first have The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon Walworth. This is a self-published book and this is also a Nutcracker retelling. Then I have got Intercepted by Alexa Martin which is a sports romance and it is second chance love if I'm not mistaken so definitely cannot wait to dive into this one as well. And then we've got Looking for Alaska by John Green which I bought such a long time ago and I never read. Then we've got 13 Reasons Why by J. Adams which I definitely did not enjoy when I read this. I believe I read this around maybe 2013, 2014. Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire. This is also another sports romance book. I do know the main love interest in this book is a boxer. I don't know why I love books, sports romances in particular, that have boxers. It's just something that I find really cool to read about. I don't know why I don't ask me. And then I have got Downworld. This is obviously an arc. This is by Rebecca Phelps. I believe this book should be out by now. And it talks a lot about the multiverse and dimensional travel, portals in different worlds. It sounds very, very cool. We have got The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, a book that I thought was middle grade and it's actually not. It's adult, very polary, very wintry. And it talks a lot about Russian lore, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have got Revenge of the Sluts by Natalie Walton. Again, another arc. And then we have got one of my favorite books of all time, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, which as you know, the writing in this was phenomenal. On top of that, it talks a lot about being a Latina, being a Latina woman, being a woman in general, and creating a space for yourself and finding power through words. It is just such an emotional read, very character-driven, 
just to say. Then what I consider to be another classic here on booktube, a book that I feel everyone was reading back in the day. We've got Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. I have not read this book yet. Then we've got another book that I am very excited about because it's very polarizing as well. Either people love it or hate it because of its writing. Very similar to Strange the Dreamer in the sense that the writing is very lyrical. So I'm very excited to read this one very, very soon. I love that it has kind of like an interactive cover of sorts. I don't know if that's what you call it. It's very different to any other cover that I own. So quite enjoy that. And then I have got You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. Next up, I've got Want to Watch by Kate Stamen London, Carrie Diaries, Summer and the City by Candace Bushnell. And then we've got Girl Boss by Sofia Amoruso, which is the founder of Nasty Gal. We've got more romance books. The first one being The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. One of my favorite romances that I have read. So steamy, so fun. It is definitely a one sitting type of book. Then we've got Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert and Christina Lauren's newest book, In a Holidays. After that, I have The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider, Beach Read by Emily Henry, which I definitely want to get to very, very soon, and Get a Life, Chloe Brown, also by Talia Hibbert. And lastly on the shelf, I have got two bookshelf veterans. First, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabosky, and then I have I've got Will Grace and Will Grace and by John Green and David Leviathan. Leviathan, Leviathan, here I go. And then for decor on the shelf, I have got a little Empire State building that I got when I went to New York for the first time. This must have been either 2011 or 2012. And then I have my little Jack Skellington mug, which holds all of my bookmarks. It holds a random pen. And then I just have some book of the month pins that came in one of my boxes when actually one of you signed up with my link, which was super, super cool. Cool. And for my last shelf, I have got my middle grade shelf, which as you can see is not that extensive. I rarely read middle grade, but I definitely want to get more into it. There are a lot of great stories in this age group that definitely do not read like middle grade and some of them have great themes and great lessons. So I definitely want to get back into this genre because it was one that I used to love when I was younger, obviously. So starting right off with this shelf, I first have the first book in the Magnus Chase series, it being being Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Sword of Summer. And then I have the first two books in the Heroes of Olympus, which is the continuation for Percy Jackson. We have got The Lost Hero and The Son of Neptune. And then I have got book three and four of the Heroes of Olympus series, The Mark of Athena, and then The House of Hades. And I do have to say, I have so many fond memories reading this series in particular. I remember loving this a lot more actually than I loved Percy Jackson. And I actually remember this more vividly. Might have been because I read this when I was, of course, older. Then I, of course, have the Percy Jackson series. This is the first three books, The Lightning Thief in the movie tie-in edition, Sea of Monsters being the second book. Then we have got The Titan's Curse. And these are all the old covers of Percy Jackson, which I will treasure forever because the covers have now changed and I am not sure if you can get these covers anymore. And then I have the last two books in the series, The Battle of the Labyrinth and The Last Olympian. And I cannot remember why I have this in a hardcover instead of a paperback. I believe it might have been because I bought this right as it came out. I could be wrong, but I do believe this book came out around the year that the movie came out. So this book might have come out 2008, 2009, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe that's why I have it in a hardcover because otherwise I can't really remember why. Next up, I have The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. And this is actually a very, very short book. So definitely one that I can read quite fast. And I have got The Red Pyramid, also by Rick Riordan. This is part of the Kane Chronicles. And then I have Furthermore by Tahira Mafi, which is actually her first middle grade. And I am very excited to explore more of Tahira Mafi's writing outside of the YA age group and also in different genres. So definitely excited to knock this one out as well. Next up, I have Frost Hard by Damie Litterler. It does have some beautiful illustrations in here as well. Then we have got Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend and The Adventurer's Guild by Zach Lauren Clark and Nick Eliopoulos, which I bought because people have said that this is very comparable to Percy Jackson in regards to the quest hours and magic. So again, that in and of itself definitely grabbed my attention. And the last two books in my middle grade shelf are actually Pages and Co. Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. And then we have got the first book in a series of unfortunate events that I actually never read when I was younger. So when I read this, it'll be the first time ever that I read it. And this is 
the Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket. Also a book with deckled edges. And the only decorative piece that I have in this middle grade shelf is actually an apple, which again used to live in my bedside table, but now I just put it at the end of this shelf because again, I do have an empty space, so it worked out perfectly. <laughs> And that is it for today, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I generally hope you guys enjoyed seeing every book that I own, my bookshelf tour. Again, I don't quite know how many books I own, but you will know in the title of the video. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below because I generally want to know how you guys organize your bookshelves. Let me know if you prefer physical, ebooks, or audiobooks because I do know that everyone prefers different methods of reading. Mine is definitely physical. I love seeing books on my bookshelf. I love reorganizing my bookshelves every once in a while and I just love staring at it in my room. It's just a dream come true to have these bookshelves. If you reach the end of the video, let's make something very, very simple and let's leave a stack of book emojis. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already for more bookish content. Again, I'm constantly uploading videos that I'm sure you do not want to miss as well as live streaming throughout the week doing my weekly reading sprints. And you can also follow me on all of my social medias, which again are always linked down below. My Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, and my Amazon wishlist. You guys know the drill. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys!